What's up, everybody? I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Um, let's get into it. I want to talk about this topic that I've been mentioning for a while, which is what happened with the Overstock.com um, crypto dividend. A lot of people have asked questions about it. I researched it a bunch today, so I wanted to provide you guys like some clarity on it. I will say this topic is deep. Like You could read all about this. Um, I'm going to link some materials in the description. But I'm just going to go over the basics so people could get an idea of what a crypto or NFT dividend could be about involving GameStop, right? And what happened with Overstock in 2019 and 2020, right? Before I hop into that, though, I want to mention uh, we're starting NFT giveaway number three. So I've got a piece of art here over on the left. Really debated for a bit today which piece to do. So this is going to be it. We're going to do it the same way. So the first 50 people that uh, respond with their GameStop wallet address in the comments. I'll send you two copies and then hopefully those people will send out copies to other people as they ask for them because everyone will get an extra one. All right. So, um, yeah, just chime in with your wallet address in the comments and I'll, I'll be giving those away. The other thing I wanted to mention was I added this cool little graphic here on the right of this rocket um, getting ready for launch. Right. I'm getting excited. Um, I'm not trying to sell hopium, but like I'm, I'm, I'm hyped up. Uh, we see the price running up today. As mentioned in uh, two videos ago, I think it was episode 30 about the cycles. So the price ran up today to 135.14. Um, Fidelity's cost to borrow actually briefly went over, um, I think it went to 29.5%, but then it settled back down at 28.75. But we're seeing that cost to borrow stay elevated. And that was one of my big bullish um, things to be uh, excited about. So I, I'm keeping that over here on the slide. And then our utilization is at 100% for day 91. So that's also very exciting. Um, one of the main things I'm really excited about, obviously, is DRS. We've got a growing number of shares getting locked away in computer share. So I've got this little um, sort of gas tank for our rocket here filling up. You can see we're at 14.8 million shares, which is over 42% of the free float. So that's pretty exciting. So as that little bar fills up, I'm hoping we see the stock do amazing things. So let's get into this overstock topic, right? Um, I'm super excited about this one because, well, I'll get into it later. I don't want to jump the gun here. But basically back in 2019, Overstock did a press release because their um, Bryn, their CEO, had been saying um, that shorts were attacking the stock. He was very outspoken about short sellers. So they announced this plan to do an airdrop of what's called OSTKO, or basically their overstock digital uh, dividend or di uh, digital um, stock. You could think of it, just think of it as a stock um, to all of their holders of their OSTK shares. Okay. So it was going to be um, a dedicated security token and it was going to be traded on um, an exchange like T0. T0 was actually a subsidiary of Overstock.com or is a subsidiary of Overstock.com. And interestingly, uh, Overstock's transfer agent is computer share, just like GameStop. All right. They were going to do their date of record on September 23rd, 2019, and their payment date um, a little bit later on November 15, 2019, probably to give them time to get it all set up because this was a lot of work apparently for T0 to actually do and computer share to do, kind of like a first of its kind crypto dividend. And they were going to have what, what's called a lockout period or a lockup period for six months. So once you got that dividend, that digital dividend, you weren't going to be able to trade it until May 15th of the following year. So six months. And this ended up being argued in court. Um, and I don't know that they lost on this particular point, but they got rid of the lockup period when they eventually did do the dividend in 2020. All right. So um, you can see this is the announcement on the graph here. So this overstock price had been dropping down over the last uh, like year and a half or so. They did this announcement. The stock price went up tremendously from like a low there of $10 to a high of 27. A lot of the reports say it went up 60%, but if you go from like the absolute low to the absolute high, you know, it went up like 170%. Really depends on how you look at it. But the reason it really dropped down was this announcement made by prime brokers like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, and I also read that it was Goldman Sachs. They agreed to take cash equivalent from um, short sellers. And they um, said that the SEC basically had their back on this. Um, so this crashed the price because the shorts no longer were worried about closing out their positions. They could just give cash to the prime brokers. 
All right, so this all ended up going to court. All right, so that point was argued in court as well. So let's go to the following year. Okay, so in the following year, on April 6th of 2020, Overstock did a new press release. They kind of changed some details of what they decided they were going to do. So they were still going to do the um, ST, OSTKO um, digital voting series A1 preferred stock. All right. They decided they would issue it out at a one coin per 10 share ratio paid as a dividend. So if you held like 100 shares, you would get 10 of these coins. All right. Interesting point though, if you had like a fractional number or like, let's say you had like seven shares, then you wouldn't qualify for the dividend and said you would get like a cash equivalent. And I find that interesting. Um, I, that doesn't seem like a good um, thing to include. Like it seems like everyone should get a dividend to me because um, it opens up this whole can of worms of then brokers and everyone could argue, oh, but it's worth cash because these other people are getting cash. If you just made sure everyone got a dividend, then you can kind of eliminate that, I think, but I don't know. Um, so this thing is a security token. It has to comply with securities laws. It basically functions like a stock, all right? So you could think of the float as basically just increasing by these preferred shares. It grants voting right and dividend rights, just like the preferred share or the normal shares do, the class A shares. But it also grants a paid annual preferential dividend. I think it was 18 cents or something like that. Um, importantly, they, they talk about how it utilizes transparent digital ledger on this block, blockchain technology so you can see when your coin was issued by computer share and all the times it traded hands. So basically it can't be synthetic. You know that all the floating um, coins are legit. And it could be traded on a de dedicated security token exchange like T0. They actually have like a broker called Dinosaur Financials or something like that. Um, and then T0, and I don't know if Dinosaur Financials was a subsidiary as well of Overstock, but basically it was kind of all done in-house. All right, they set their ex-dividend date as April 24th, the date of record as April 27th, and their payment date is May 19th. No lockout period this time, so once you got your token or your coin, uh, then you could start trading it on T0 and selling it. So you can see here, it hit an absolute low of $2.65. They were like embroiled in this court case. No one knew what was gonna happen with the, with the dividend. And then it ran up all the way up to like $128, all right? So a lot of articles will mention it basically 17 x Really depends on how you look at it from like where to where. But I mean, it just ran up tremendously, right? Like at least 17 x So over a very short period of time, this is only a couple of months here. So. Basically, it went through a double squeeze. It went through a mini squeeze at first, got embroiled in some lawsuits. Six months later or so, they got it all done, got the share, uh, the dividend issued out to people. And so that's that's the gist of the story there. But there's a lot there. You could dig in, and I'm going to provide some materials, like I said. All right, so here's maybe the synopsis. There were four counts in this court case. It went to a uh, Utah court. And basically, the short sellers argued that Overstock had misrepresented their, uh, had done misleading statements about the company, that they were engaging in market manipulation by issuing this uh, crypto dividend. They argued that the CFO and CEO were uh, not fulfilling their roles appropriately, and they accused the CEO of insider trading. He had actually sold off all his all his shares though prior to any announcement or anything. So that's an interesting claim to make because he he could have made just an incredible amount of money, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. I mean, he didn't because he sold before all this happened. Um, the judge ended up ruling and dismissing all counts, I believe with prejudice. Um, number one in their argument, the judge or the defense stated that um, the shorts brought the risk upon themselves. Um, I, I want to clarify, I, we're not sure if the defense wrote these arguments or if the judge just signed off on them or if the, if the judge wrote these arguments himself, but these are the rulings of the court basically or the argument um, on the case by the court. So number one, like the shorts bring their own risk. They can't, they can't defer that risk onto other parties. Um, number two, that the div dividend actually did have a legitimate business purpose, you know, provide this pre preferential annual um, dividend to the shareholders. And then number three, the, um, the company was transitioning from a retail store to a blockchain technology company. So it had a, a reason to be involved with crypto to begin with, all right? There were some technical legal shenanigans that followed this up. There were some 
particular footnote in, in the docket, like footnote 36, I think it was, um, and the judge like maybe misrepresented what was in that footnote. So the legal team of the shorts that brought the case, like we're basically going to refile it and all stuff. I don't know. It's a bunch of legal mumble jumbo, but basically the judge um, vacated the ruling or the decision. Um, I'm not sure what that means for the case. Um, it hasn't been refiled or reopened as far as I know. Um, the, the crypto has been issued, um, but you can see the price is running down over the last couple months, kind of in tandem. I think it may have spiked in November, just like GameStop did, interestingly. I think this is early November, like November 3rd, and this is late November, like November 23rd. And then it's been running down ever since. I'm curious where this spike is too. If that's March 25th, that would be a topic for a whole nother video, but I don't know. All right, so where does this leave us? Well, it leaves us with this, these ideas, right? You probably have some ideas coming down, you know, in your head, like could GameStop give, do a crypto or NFT dividend? Um, like aren't they a blockchain technology company? So I'm gonna actually leave that for video number two. So I wanted to make this all about story time, right? Give you some backstory on Overstock because it is mentioned quite a bit. Basically it's squeezed twice over this issuance of a crypto dividend. Why did it squeeze? Because shorts had to exit. They couldn't provide um, a cash equivalent. Actually, that was ruled by the court that they couldn't do it. So that's why it did squeeze the second time and hard, right? So they had to close out their positions. They couldn't issue the dividend or they had to go and locate those tokens on T0 to provide to people. So it put them under just tremendous pressure to close out their positions extremely quickly, which is what drove the price up. A uh, final interesting point is apparently the short interest wasn't even very high. People have speculated it was about 6%, um, you know, reported shorts, who knows about naked shorting and all the other things going on. So in video two, I'm gonna discuss what does this mean for GameStop? Hopefully that video was helpful ex in explaining this topic. Again, if you're interested in an NFT, this is gonna be the third one. Um, just leave your GameStop wallet address in the comments and I'll see you guys in video number two.